we are praying all the time that this does You're watching London tonight, also ahead this evening. He could have just eight hours to live. Akmal Sheikh from Kentish Town has been told by Chinese authorities that at half past 2 a.m. our time, he will be executed. His crime? Smuggling heroin through a Chinese airport two years ago. His defence? That he is mentally ill. Tonight, with the Chinese government showing no sign of leniency, members of Mr Sheikh's family have joined a vigil at the Chinese embassy in Portland Place. Our reporter, Louis Vaughan-Jones, is there for us now. Louis. Well, Ben, this vigil has been here all day, but I'm afraid we're into the last hours now. But that doesn't mean anyone here is giving up hope or fighting. Uh, this afternoon, they handed in a petition to the Chinese embassy, which is just on the other side of the road, asking for clemency or mercy. Now, they accept that he was caught with drugs in China, but say he's not a drug smuggler and that he was manipulated by the people around him and this wasn't taken account of in the court case. They're asking now for a stay of execution. A secure hospital in northwest China. Inside, Akmal Sheikh from northwest London is facing execution. Just a few hours ago, he was told he has just a few hours to live. And for the first time since his arrest two years ago, he's been allowed to see his family. We saw him today and uh, he was obviously very upset on hearing from us of the sentence that has been passed. We beg the Chinese authorities to show mercy and clemency to help reunite this heartbroken family. The family also delivered a letter to the Chinese explaining Akmal's mental illness. In 2003, he left his wife and children in Kentish town and headed to Poland. There, a criminal gang fooled him into believing they could turn him into a pop star in China. His lawyers say the video proves Akmal's delusions and vulnerable mental state. They say he was manipulated, used as a drugs mule to carry heroin across the border. I understand under Chinese law, his condition of mental disorder can also be evaluated. All I'm asking and begging is that he be given this chance and save his life. That's all we can ask. Outside the Chinese embassy in central London, supporters held a candlelit vigil. His family are here too, but not his mother, who's too frail to hear the news. Absolutely devastating, absolutely devastated. I mean, his, his own mother does not know yet, and hopefully it will not come to that point where we have to tell her. We can just hope and pray that we don't need to tell her, because without a doubt, it won't. This execution will take two lives, without a doubt. The legal process has been exhausted. There are no formal appeals left. His family are now just appealing for compassion and mercy. Well, the question now is, what are the chances of that happen, of the Chinese changing their mind? Well, China executes more people than the rest of the world put together. On the other hand, Gordon Brown has been dealing with this personally. Foreign Office officials have been on the phone this evening, and there's one last shred of hope. The Chinese have, in the past, granted last-minute reprieves. That's what the family here are hoping for. Lewis Vaughan Jones, thank you. Next tonight, has a 23-year-old man from Wandsworth been abducted in the Swiss Alps? Miles Robinson was last seen almost a week ago after he left a bar in the skiing resort of Wengen. And his family has rejected any idea that he may have died in an avalanche. They believe he may have been kidnapped, as Vanessa Langford reports. An annual family ski trip has turned into the most harrowing Christmas for the loved ones of missing Londoner Miles Robinson. The 23-year-old from Wandsworth was last seen in the early hours of December the 22nd in the Swiss ski resort of Wengen. His girlfriend Sophie Harrell had been due to join Miles and his family in Switzerland for New Year. She's devastated. It's now almost a week since Miles has been seen. We just need more and more information just to sort of keep people looking out for him. I mean, there's, he's got so many family friends out there that his size and age 
that they've stopped and asked EU Mars Robinson. So it's obviously working. We just need more and more of it to keep, you know. He's a tall man. He's got to be. He can't hide. The six foot five graduate was captured on CCTV, leaving the Blue Monkey Bar in Wengen as he walked a friend back the short distance to her hotel. His family are hoping that Swiss police will now treat his disappearance as a criminal act and have made an application for officers to search homes and businesses in Wengen. Somebody must have, you know, either taken him or done something to him, and uh, uh, you know, we just, you know, hope that he is somewhere. But uh, it's not easy for us. All those who know Miles describe him as a confident and popular young man with everything to look forward to. He was due to begin a new job in London in January. He's been looking for a job for a while now, but this time it was all so right, and he was so ambitious, and you could just tell that this was the job that he wanted, because he just came back after every interview saying, "Yeah, it went really well," and then they asked him for another interview and it was just also positive and he was really excited. Vanessa Langford, London Tonight. On to some more headlines now and the East London Mosque has denied knowing of any link with the Nigerian accused of trying to blow up a plane over Detroit. It's been claimed Umar Farouk Abdul Muttalib had visited the mosque in Whitechapel when he was a student here in London. But a spokesman said they were unaware if he'd been there and they were appalled by his alleged actions. Haringey council worker has been suspended after a confidential child protection report was left on a train. The 15-page file included details on a boy taken away from his mother over fears he could be abused. Haringey council, which was at the centre of the Baby P scandal, says it's investigating. And London group Status Quo has been crowned Britain's hardest working band after performing more concerts than anyone else. The rockers from Catford have played in front of more than 250,000 fans at 27 arenas this year alone. OK, it is 39 minutes past six. Still to come in London tonight. Benjamin Franklin. Do it. Absolutely. Liquid ecstasy. The drug, GBL, has become increasingly popular on London's gay club scene, but it can prove deadly. And a special clinic has now been set up here in the capital to help those who've become addicted to it. A word of warning, Nick Thatcher's report contains some bright flashing lights. It's an increasingly popular drug on the capital's club scene. GBL, as it's known, is said to make its users feel drunk and confident. But it's highly addictive. It's easy to overdose when taking it, and it can be lethal. So one London hospital has set up a specialist clinic to support people who've become dependent on the drug. Those who use the drug round the clock, withdrawal is very severe. It starts with anxiety and tremors, uh, but can rapidly progress to a confusional state and psychosis. And it's, it's very difficult to manage if it progresses to that point. GBL is actually cheap commercial cleaning fluid, but once in the body it converts to GHB, also known as liquid ecstasy. It had been freely available to buy here, but the government this month moved to classify it as a banned drug. It followed the death of Hester Stewart, a 21-year-old student who died after taking GBL mixed with alcohol. And last week we learned that the death of a young Londoner had become the first in the UK to be linked solely to GBL. The 25-year-old had been out clubbing and died six hours after returning home. A post-mortem examination found evidence of GBL but no trace of any other drugs, including alcohol. Charities have welcomed the new GBL clinic and say more specialist services are needed in London to support those dependent on less mainstream drugs. Even though we don't know the scale of the problem, there are clearly people who do get into difficulties with GBL. Um, and I have to say that there are other people who've got problems with uh, other drugs like ketamine, anabolic steroids, um, where the uh, facilities for people currently don't exist. Banning GBL, of course, won't mean an end to accidents or tragedies. But the hope is this new service will help support those dependent on the drug to kick their addiction before it's too late. Nick Thatcher, London Tonight.